In this video, we will learn about two-fourths and three-fourths members. The reason why we want to learn about them is because if we can identify them in the structure, it could help us simplify the problem and make the calculation easier. Let's look at this member, and it is given that forces are only applied on two points on this member, say point A and point B. At first, we don't know what directions these forces are in, so let's draw them in arbitrary directions. But we know that two points define a line, and we can always draw a straight line connecting point A and point B. And since we can also choose to set up the coordinate system as we want, why don't we set it up this way, with x-axis along this line and y-axis perpendicular to this line. And we know that any arbitrary force in this plane can be resolved into an x-component force and a y-component force. Now let's try to write the equilibrium equations. First, the resultant moment about point A equals to zero. And since force BY is the only force that could possibly create a moment about point A, because the other three forces all have lines of action passing through point A, therefore force BY must be zero. Similarly, by summarizing moment about point B, we can conclude that force AY also must be zero. And lastly, by summarizing the force along the x-axis, we can tell AX plus BX equals to zero, therefore AX equals to negative BX. So if a member only has forces acting on two points, it is called a two-force member. And the two forces will have the same magnitude, opposite direction, and same line of action, which is simply the line connecting the two points. Similarly, if a member only has forces acting on three points, it is known as a three-force member. And for a 2D problem, these three forces are either concurrent or parallel to each other. The reason is because, let's say, two of the forces are not parallel, then they must intercept at a point, say, point O. And since we can write a moment equilibrium equation about any arbitrary point, let's write the resultant moment about point O, that the resultant moment is zero. Since the third force is the only force that can possibly create moment about point O, because the other two forces have lines of action passing through point O, but it also must create a moment of zero, therefore for that to happen, it must also pass point O. I will leave it to you to prove that if two forces are parallel to each other, then the third force must also be parallel to them, following again the same moment equilibrium requirement. You should see that these conclusions on the force requirements for two force members or three force members are all derived from rigid body equilibrium equations. They are not additional conditions that we can use on top of equilibrium conditions. They simply provide alternative anal analyzing method that could hopefully help us simplify the calculation. Let's look at this example. We need to find the support reactions at pins A and B. If we want to treat this assembly as one system and draw only one free body diagram, then since we know that there are two force reactions associated with each pin support, together we will have four unknowns, but we can only write three independent equations, and that won't be enough to solve for all unknowns. But we can solve this problem by analyzing each member separately. Then the forces at joint C which are internal now become external and must be included in the two separate free body diagrams. But notice how they are actions and reactions. So we have two free body di diagrams. Therefore, we can write six equilibrium equations in total, and that will enable us to solve for all of our six unknowns, AX, AY, BX, BY, CX, and CY. However, if we could realize that member AC is actually a two-force member since it is only subjected to forces at two points A and C, therefore the forces acting on it must be along this line that connects these two points. Now, we no longer have two unknowns at pin support A since we can determine the direction of the force. Now, we can again treat the assembly as one system. Even more, 
we notice that member BC is also a three force member, and we know the direction of two forces acting on it already. Therefore, the third force must be concurrent with the other two. And therefore, we can also determine the direction of the force acting at pin support B. By applying geometry, we know this angle is a 67.5 degree angle. Now we have one free body diagram with only two unknowns. We can write two equilibrium equations to solve for both of them. Negative sign in force FB indicates that its direction is opposite to what we assumed. Hopefully you've learned from this example that by identifying two force and three force members, we can effectively simplify our calculation.